left and right brain thinking modes. A theory of the structure and functions of the mind suggests that the two different sides of the brain control two different modes of thinking. It also suggests that each of us prefers one mode over the other. Experimentation has shown that the two different sides or hemispheres of the brain are responsible for different manners of thinking, such as logical, random, sequential, intuitive, rational, holistic, analytical, synthesizing, objective, subjective, looks at parts, or looks at wholes. Let's try an experiment. Look at the following words and say the color of the word out loud. Do not say the word shown, just the color. Ready? This is an example of left-right conflict. Your right brain tries to say the color shown, but your left brain insists on reading the word. Most individuals have a distinct preference for one of these styles of thinking. Some, however, are more whole-brained and equally adept at both modes. In general, schools tend to favor left-brain modes of thinking while downplaying the right-brain ones. Left brain scholastic subjects focus on logical thinking, analysis, and accuracy. Right brain subjects, on the other hand, focus on aesthetics, feeling, and creativity. When people develop a dominance towards the left or right side of the brain, they tend to have certain characteristics and areas of interest. Let's look at these characteristics and see if they belong on the left or right side of the brain. If you enjoy clowning around, that's a right brain characteristic. If you prefer being serious, that's a left brain characteristic. If you prefer cats, that's a right brain characteristic. While if you prefer dogs, that's a left brain characteristic. If you prefer rock music, it's a right brain. And classical music, left brain. If you prefer visual instructions, that's a right brain characteristic. And if you prefer verbal instructions, that's a left brain characteristic. What occupations do left and right brain dominant people often gravitate toward? Let's look at some occupations and decide if these are left or right brain dominant people. An artist is usually right brain dominant, whereas a scientist is left brain dominant. A judge is probably left brain dominant, and a politician right brain dominant. A craftsman could be right brain dominant, while a teacher may be left brain dominant. A stylist is probably right brain dominant. Left and right brain dominant people all learn differently. Let's listen to an instructor who has a problem with some students. Wallace scored strong right on a brain preference test I gave to my students at the beginning of the school year. His left hemisphere, though healthy, is significantly weaker than his right. Though Wallace does not have a learning disability, he has difficulty processing information that is presented verbally. When I lecture or talk in compound, complex sentences, Wallace gets anxious and overwhelmed and shuts down. We are doing a unit on the solar system next month. What can I do to help him be successful? Some ideas might be, during the lecture, either write the main points on the board or pass out a study guide outline that students can fill in as you present orally. These visual clues will help students focus, even though you are lecturing. Use the overhead, the whiteboard, or the chalkboard frequently. Since the students are apt to miss the points discussed orally, the visual pointers will help the students see and comprehend the points. Have some time for group activities during the week of the solar system study. Right brain students enjoy the company of others. Let the students create a project, such as a poster, a mobile, a diorama, or paper mache planets of the solar system, in lieu of writing a paper. Students like Wallace often have excellent eye-hand coordination. Play music, such as the theme from 2001, A Space Odyssey. Discuss how space might feel to an astronaut. Students with bright brain strengths are intuitive and like to get in touch with their feelings during the day. Bring in charts and maps of the universe 
and let the students find the Milky Way. Maps and graphs make use of the students' strong right-brain visual spatial skills. Let's listen to the instructor one more time. Another student of mine, Kathy, scored strong left on the same test. Kathy's right hemisphere is significantly weaker than her left. She has great difficulty understanding lessons with a visual spatial orientation. Kathy is also a perfectionist. When the fourth grade teacher initiates an art project, Kathy believes she cannot do the work successfully. She is afraid to fail and consequently becomes nauseous. Seeing the nurse accomplishes two things. It gets her away from an unpleasant situation and gives her time to regroup herself prior to reading time. So what can I do to reach Kathy and other students like her? Some ideas might be write an outline of the lesson on the board. Students with left brain strengths appreciate sequence. Go ahead and lecture. These students love to listen to an expert and take notes. Discuss vocabulary words. Students like Kathy have a large vocabulary and are interested in words. Make a crossword puzzle on the solar system. Discuss the big concepts involved in the creation of the universe. Left brain students love to think about and discuss abstract concepts. Assign individual projects so students may work alone. Ask the students to write a research paper on the solar system that includes both detail and conceptual analysis. Keep the room relatively quiet and orderly. Many students with left brain strengths prefer not to hear other conversations when working on a stimulating project. Congratulations, you have completed this activity, Left and Right Brain Thinking Modes.